In the second section of the point cloud analysis lecture, we will discuss point cloud data processing. Uh, we will talk about preview and analysis of point distribution, which is quite important uh, when you are deciding about what kind of tools do you want to use uh, for data processing and uh, how you can use your data for modeling. But also, it's important for understanding potential artifacts and errors in point cloud data. Uh, then we will briefly discuss filtering outliers uh, and in case we have uh, sufficient data, bare, or bare earth point extraction. Uh, another step in point cloud data processing is often uh, classification of point cloud if you don't have the data already classified. And then in preparation of deriving uh, and transformation of point cloud data to a more structured uh, representation, it is the decimation or point cloud thinning. And then finally, we will talk in a next section about transformation to surfaces or 3D objects. So why do we need to analyze point distribution and how do we do that? Uh, the point, the best and easiest way to analyze point distribution is based on raster or grid. And <clears throat> by defining a grid uh, at certain resolution, we can then compute point statistics for each grid cell. Uh, and then we can do this at different resolutions. So the first basic step is often just computing a number of points per grid cell. So you select a grid cell, let's say at 1 meter resolution, 3 meter resolution, or 10 meter resolutions, and then you compute how many points fall into each grid cell at this resolution, and you create a map of point counts. Uh, another very useful metrics to compute based on binning or per cell or per grid cell statistics is the range of Z values per each grid cell um, or standard deviation. These two measures give you, uh, give you a, an information about the vertical variability uh, of your point cloud within these different grid cells and how it is distributed overall, uh, over the study area. And these statistics uh, allow you to identify gaps in data. That means areas where the uh, uh, mapping missed uh, or where, the, uh, where there wasn't enough uh, returns. Uh, so the, uh, and also the density gives you some information about potential for artifacts due to flight overlaps. At the same time, if you do this analysis uh, at uh, several different resolutions, it also gives you a very good information to select appropriate uh, sub, uh, resolution for deriving your surfaces. So here is an example of uh, uh, point distribution for different types of point clouds. So the first one is the all returns uh, 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 LiDAR data. <clears throat> so you can clearly identify an overlap here uh, that has much higher point density than the areas that were surveyed only once. You can also identify moiré effect uh, that usually isn't, uh, doesn't have much impact on the uh, resulting surfaces or resulting analysis. But the overlap, uh, overlaps, swath overlaps uh, <clears throat> may be important uh, uh, and may need to be uh, processed to avoid, uh, uh, to avoid, for example, the shifts in the data and uh, artificial breaks in the data. The second uh, image shows the uh, point cloud density for bare earth data. Uh, that means that the, uh, from this all return data, the bare ground points were extracted. And then you can see that the, the distribution is much sparser. So we have fewer points per grid cell. And this was done uh, for one meter grid cell size. 
and uh, you can also see spots that have no points so you can think about what these uh, uh, what these areas are that have no ground points and by the shape you can guess that these areas are in fact buildings so the buildings were removed from this uh, from the bare ground point cloud and then the third example actually shows terrestrial lidar point cloud uh, distribution and you can see that it's highly variable this is where the where the uh, uh, scanning station is located so very close to scanning station we have very high density uh, tens of points per uh, a square meter even up to 100, 100 points but as you go farther away uh, there are really areas that don't have any points at all so it gets much sparser so when you so there is a big difference uh, between processing terrestrial lidar point clouds and airborne LiDAR point clouds. This is a, uh, this is a closer look, zoom into uh, point uh, densities at our, uh, at our mid pines area uh, where we have the LiDAR point cloud. And again, we are comparing here the uh, number of points per one meter grid cell from all returns and this is this image again you can see the you can see the overlap but you can also see higher point densities in the area where we have the trees and then uh, this image shows the point cloud densities uh, for bare ground and you can identify that even after processing and extracting the point uh, densities you still have this edge from different between the point cloud densities point clouds that were uh, acquired uh, from different swaths so probably go airplane going in different direction but also the conditions of sampling were different uh, because the uh, you have these different stripes and the moire effect uh, in the point cloud densities Keep in mind that this is number of points per grid cell and that this is not your elevation. And some of these effects don't really uh, have much influence on, the, uh, on your resulting digital elevation model, but they may influence uh, uh, parameters that are derived based on point cloud densities. And uh, uh, this uh, point cloud density analysis is for the data from structure from motion. So you can see it's different. One thing that you can notice that is similar, what we had in the point cloud density uh, from LiDAR is the Moire effect. So you can see it here. But then the point cloud distribution is uh, higher for example around the edges of the building and you also can see the higher point cloud density around the trees in this tree area and that's because we are getting full three-dimensional representation of the envelope of the tree canopy so we don't see inside but the structure of the tree is actually pretty complex so we get more points in this area so you can see that uh, the point cloud distribution is uh, uh, very often highly spatially variable and that's why it is always useful to do some analysis before you go on and do, do the processing this so so this is the point cloud density then another analysis that is uh, very useful to do within the uh, within the grid cells uh, another type of statistics is the range the difference between the minimum uh, z value and maximum z value uh, measured in uh, in a grid cell that's usually useful to do for a larger size of grid cells so here in this case we are doing it uh, for um, three meter uh, uh, grid resolution and uh, we are computing it for LiDAR point cloud and then for the point cloud derived from structure from motion. 
and you can see that in spite of the fact that we have the that the point cloud uh, uh, for lidar data has much sparser point, it doesn't have such a high density, we are getting much greater range, a vertical range of points in this uh, uh, in this area where we have the trees. So the Z range is around zero in the fields and that's for both of these point clouds. Uh, maybe it goes here where we have the vegetation a little bit higher but where we have the trees it is uh, it can go much higher and it's much better captured with the lidar data and then we also mentioned the outliers uh, outliers are present in both lidar and structure from motion uh, point clouds uh, they can be either below the surface or a uh, couple hundred meters above the surface they are usually quite easy to, to remove because they are just quite different uh, from the rest of the point cloud. So they are usually removed as the data are processed and georeferenced. If there are still some left, for example, here we have a, an outlier uh, in, the, uh, in the point cloud uh, that was already cleaned up uh, and delivered, uh, delivered, but there still was about one, one point that was 600 meters above the surface. Uh, that can be uh, very easily removed by using the threshold above the, the bare ground. If you have a bare ground or some low resolution digital elevation model, uh, you can very quickly identify it and, uh, um, and remove it. So we have already mentioned that bare ground and feature extraction is an important part of point cloud processing. Uh, it is uh, easiest to do when you have multiple returns, those are helpful, but if you have very high point density, multiple returns are not necessary as long as you can get some data that are actually reaching bare ground. Uh, so, so the main condition for extracting bare ground or for extracting certain features is that that feature or, uh, or the surface is sampled by sufficient number of points. Uh, if you don't have any points reaching the bare ground, then you can't really extract it. And there are several algorithms uh, uh, that are available for extracting bare ground surface and then entire huge research on different feature extractions based on the ge surface geometry. And uh, especially for bare ground, the, the approaches are multi-scale. So you are starting with a lower resolution and, and uh, extracting the points that are above certain uh, threshold of either curvature or slope or even the range uh, uh, elevation range and then, uh, then you are increasing the resolution and extracting more and more of these points that are above this, uh, uh, above the selected curvature threshold or, uh, or certain morphology uh, defined by slope or, um, or just the extent uh, or difference uh, in Z, uh, uh, Z values. So here is an example of uh, uh, extracting above ground point cloud from uh, structure from motion point uh, uh, points. So you can see that even without multiple return data, you can extract buildings and you can extract trees, uh, uh, as we can see in this example. So, so there is the, the bare ground uh, surface from LiDAR, uh, just used as a background, and then all the points that are defining the building, above ground points and the, uh, and the trees. And then you have seen that the, that the point cloud data are very, very dense and very often for our application, we don't need all, all the points. So it is very useful to first thin the point cloud, subsample it to the point density that is needed for our particular application. 
So it's, uh, uh, the process is often referred to as decimation. It reduces the point cloud size. It makes it easier to manage and easier to transform to different representations. And you always need to think about the thinning threshold, how, dense, uh, how much density you need to preserve. Uh, and we will show example of a very simple count-based decimation, which preserves variation in density. Uh, and it's very simple, very fast. You just remove, let's say, every third point or every tenth point. Uh, and grid-based decimation, which uh, removes variation in density and essentially preserve, uh, preserve a certain number of points per grid cell. And then there are more complex uh, decimations, such as distance, three-dimensional distance-based uh, decimation, which uh, removes all the points that are closer to each other than certain threshold, taking into account a three-dimensional distance, because uh, the, the previous two are really just two-dimensional. And the, the most sophisticated is geometry-based decimation, which is spatially variable, uh, computationally quite intensive, and it's based, it preserves the points density based on the shape of the features. So you will have, uh, let's say for buildings with sharp edges, it will preserve more points than for open field. So this is an example of count-based decimation. Uh, so you can see that the preserves relative point densities. It's very fast because it just skips uh, every other point or every tenth point on, or so on. And this is the grid pace decimation. Again, it's, uh, it's uh, relatively fast. It removes variation in point densities. That means that if you have, for example, point densities due to the overlap, then this would be a good way how to, uh, how to remove these um, increased or very high point, point densities in the overlaps. Uh, and uh, this is also very suitable when you need to interpolate the data because it makes the interpol uh, interpolation much faster and it provides homogeneous distribution of points for, uh, for the interpolation. Which brings us to computing the digital elevation model, which we will discuss in another section of this lecture.